Hello everybody, Anton is here. In this video I'll talk about a little pretty cool trick on how you can optimize some of your environments and their textures and uh, maintain performance and maintain like um, production speed and quality. So I have this game that I've just shown. It's uh, the game I've been doing with my friend a couple of years ago that never really got released and due to many personal reasons. Maybe we will finish it one day. But so my friend was doing all the code and I was doing all the art. So I was doing everything from sketching to uh, modeling the environments and you know animating, doing everything really, painting and all that. So here I've got the tile of this of this road where a car drives through and hits monsters and monsters and such. Another tile right here. So the Interesting thing about these guys, these tiles, they're pretty big and they use a texture that is 256 by 256 pixels per whole tile. I think there are three textures, but they're 256 by 256 pixels and they can go down, you can down raise them to 128 by 128 and you won't really lose much of a quality. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Right. And I achieved it essentially by uh, the first I modeled this environment in ZBrush cut uh, all the, did all these cuts and such I do have a video on how I sculpt rocks and um, like realistic rocks and the technique that I used in that video I used here that you can check it out on my channel so I did the high res model then I created a low poly one and then for every single surface, like I have it here, right? I started. I created a UV shell, and that's the really the biggest trick. For every surface, I did a UV shell. Then I baked a ambient occlusion map, and I blew it out. Applied the color, and there you go. It creates you this type of stylized look. There is no lighting in the scene, so we were looking for the way how we could really make it a really performing mobile game, right? So it's a stylized mobile game. Uh, like I can do a whole range of stuff like realistic and, uh, and so such but, and such, but when you're doing a game that you only have one artist, like you're aiming at a kind of stylized stuff that you can produce faster. So I was looking for the ways where I don't have to texture that much. So by creating a bu whole bunch of UV shells, baking ambient occlusion, and I was just applying a color to it, I achieved it. So I'm just showing you the, you know, those all those UV shells I have here. You can see there's pr quite a bit of distance between the shells. That's exactly because I wanted to go that to be to be able to go down to 128 by 128 pixels. If, uh, because at the time we wanted to allow this game to run on really low-end mobile devices like Galaxy A3, if you remember one of those, right? And usually it's never the polygons that are bottleneck. Those textures, shaders, lighting, physics, collision, that's all, all that stuff is really an issue here. Um, right. So I'm s inside of those uh, one of those textures, so you can see I'm using the blue color to add this bluish tint in a lighting mode then I have just a uh, beige color in a multiply and then I have a beige color in hard light just again playing with material colors and all that so that was my wood then I had some other material not sure which one was that then I had the red cloth red uh, material and my metal again in different li like linear dodge hard light again couple of different uh, layer modes that are creating a nicer look. Then I have the original IBM occlusion. I can see it here. Baked it in Maya. Really fast bake. Then I uh, converted it to a smart object and applied Gaussian blue. So I had uh, three pixels radius that I value that I apply to every single uh, map and got my result. 
and one thing I use like a lot of people most of the people hate doing UVs so I'm using this software called Edu CV layout I've been using it for 10 years now and uh, it's still the best UV lay uh, laying out software in the market so I really highly recommend it uh, my 3 ds Mac they caught up a little bit but I still prefer to use, it, use this particular one because it's still so much faster unless I have something really simple that I can do in Maya and uh, don't have to export and input the model outside okay so if I were to do such a game today how would I approach it differently if I would I actually would I think I wouldn't use this particular way of texturing because what it can do is you can just use a materials and lighting and not texture at all and uh, so you was like oh why did you even then share that this whole way of technique way of doing stuff if you're not going to use it in future well the thing is that this is something that you might find really really useful to think about and it might really serve you in some situation this you know really creative use of UV lay laying out where you can manipulate this color that becomes a gradient that you cannot even destroy by lowering the resolution of your texture this is i mean I was, I was so proud of this technique back in the days like i haven't seen anybody doing anything like that and i was like oh wow i can actually achieve a really nice stylization really easily doing this i didn't have a youtube channel at the time so no now and now i have so now i can share with everybody and if you want to check out more stuff from this game you can go to the facebook page do not like do not subscribe i hate when people ask to do that and please don't uh, it's a game that probably will never get finished but still an interesting thing to show and you know i, I even did this girl and i even painted this girl uh, everything uh, the logo everything was done by me and it will never be used anyway but you know something to talk about you know you never know what you uh you know what you're gonna achieve what you're gonna do but you gotta try oh well, thank you guys for coming in and see you next time